Hello, humans, and welcome to episode 40 of Chef Mike Does Stuff. I, of course, am Chef Mike because it said so right here on my chef coat. And today I'm wearing glasses. Why am I wearing glasses? Well, I'll tell you why. Today's episode is sponsored by none other than Gamer Advantage. <laughs> Editing Chef Mike will add some applause. Yeah. So I am wearing the Inferno um, frames with the suppressor lenses. Do you have uh, trouble when you're with your eyes, when you're staring at a screen all day? Sometimes after you've worked all day or gamed all day, is it hard for you to go to sleep? Check out Gamer Advantage. There's actually a bunch of documentation and testing and examples on their website of why these glasses may help you sleep better. And by the time this airs, Use discount code Chef Mike and you might get extra sweet discount. Normally, I think it's 10% with the code. Maybe it's more, might be 20. Who knows? It'll say when that's active and all that stuff. Anyway, the other cool thing about these is I also have the sunglass attachments as well. So these are pretty awesome. My wife has actually been using these every day. I've, I'm in the kitchen a lot, so sometimes I'm not always at a screen or playing video games. But my wife has literally said that when she does not wear these, she notices it in her eyes. She feels more tired and things like that. So my wife says they work. There you go. Today, we are going to, in honor of the Inferno uh, frames, I am going to make a spicy mac and cheese. But here's the thing. As you're also well aware, Chef Mike hasn't been making a lot of videos. Got a new job, life, kids, adulting, all of those. I'm going to make a spicy mac and cheese with just the ingredients I have in my house. I did not go shopping. So some of the cheeses are, you know, not necessarily what I'd normally use. I'm not going to look at a recipe. So there is a chance that this might not turn out, but I'm assuming it's going to be awesome. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start cooking some tasty mac and cheese of some, it's probably a cheddar-y type uh, one. And thank you again, Gamer Advantage. Use code Chef Mike to get a sweet discount. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is check out my cheese selection. So yes, I do have a couple slices of pasteurized processed cheese. I'm just gonna use what I got. I have children. My children love this kind of cheese. The other good thing about this cheese is it melts ridiculously perfect in a mac and cheese. Some of you, if you are in the southern states of uh, the United States, your grandma might have used things like Velveeta and other processed cheeses. It is what it is. Next, this is actually my favorite cheese ever that I use on everything. Queso Chihuahua, also Mexican style quesadilla cheese for melting. That seems delightful. Uh, again, I'm not using a recipe, so I'm just putting like some in. I am basically judging uh, how much sauce and cheese I'm gonna need for a one pound box of pasta. I have already cooked the noodles. This is, oh, it's upside down. And I just dropped it. This is what I'm using. I cooked it already. Uh, I just let it sit, it's still warm. I just finished it. One pound, that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna try to just gauge how much cheese uh, I need for this recipe. I'm gonna do this in a way where uh, I'm using uh, whole milk. I'm gonna use a little butter and flour mixture, a little bit of a roux to, uh, to thicken that up. I'm gonna add my cheeses and whatnot to that, melt it in, and then finally I'm gonna put it in a fancy little cast iron pot or pan, and I'll bake it in the oven. I do have some um, breadcrumbs. I've got some dried chives. I've got sriracha and I've got some chili flake. So that is what we're gonna do, uh, hopefully with that. So I got some of that regular, uh, like store brand cheddar. So because I consult and have a job, I have random cheeses for random purposes all over the place. This is Kerrygold aged, this is the, the real deal. So one thing you might wanna note is the more age it has, uh, and the drier it is, also with some fat content on it, some cheeses are not as good melting in your mac and cheese. So, gotta be, uh, just gotta be careful with that. All right, 
pound of pasta, that cheese salsa, that looks good. Again, I have no idea how much cheese is in there, but this is what I'm gonna start off with. I might also mix a little more extra cheese after the sauce is made, maybe some chihuahua uh, in the mix there, just to have some more like kind of melty shredded cheese. And I might top it with some cheese and breadcrumb too. We'll see where it goes from there, but here's my cheese. In this pot, I've got a half stick of melted butter that I am going to add some chili flake to first. We are making a roux. Yes, I am also adding chili flakes right now to this. Couple reasons, uh, because it's gonna look cool. Uh, I want some of that red color to kind of come out of the chili flake. That's gonna make our cheese sauce a little more red, just a touch. We're gonna add some sriracha later, but I want our chili flake to be cooked and hydrated. I want like the heat and the flavor to be evenly dispersed in the sauce as opposed to sprinkling dry chili flake over something. Then you get like a little hot spots. So I'm gonna cook the chili flake in with the roux. And I'm gonna try to add just about the same amount of all-purpose flour as I did butter. So that's, uh, you know, a half a stick of, uh, half a stick worth. Does it look kinda... There, that's it. I'm gonna mix this. Let's see how it looks. Don't worry, it's not gonna be clumpy. Let's see, I might add just a touch more. Once again, I'm making a roux. A roux is a great way to thicken things. So it's just butter and flour. You're gonna wanna cook the flour for at least a couple minutes. This will get it ready to hydrate. This will alleviate some of the graininess you might um, taste if you don't do this step. Um, but we're gonna cook it just till when it starts to slightly, like once you see a little corner kind of brown or you move it around and it looks like it's actively browning, we're gonna cut the heat. Okay, and you can see that the color definitely got a little darker, a little browner. You could kind of smell kind of like toasted um, aromatics. It's perfect. So this would be technically a blonde roux. If you're making, let's say, Cajun or Creole cooking, you've made roux where you'll cook it for hours and hours until it's almost black. Um, we're not going there. We're really just using this more for function. So next thing we're gonna do, I've got two cups of whole milk. Like so. Keep whisking, keep whisking. I might add a little extra milk. So I probably end up being three cups of milk and I'm gonna put this back on the stove to be boiling. So basically, we are now gonna cook this back up and let all the starches uh, do what they gotta do, have the starches thicken. You're gonna wanna do that before you add your cheese. That will make things a lot easier. So I'll be back in maybe five, six minutes. Okay, as you can see, there is no cheese in this yet. It is a thickened milk, roux thickened milk right now with chili flake. That's it. You can see that the consistency is starting to get a little cheese saucy looking you are gonna wanna make sure that you're at least kind of this thick before you start adding cheese to it because if it's not, it, it just does not melt as good, as smooth and as nice. This is right off the stove. Also, once we start adding cheese in here, when you put it back on the stove, if we need to, you do not need to crank it. It needs to be low. The temperature that you cooked it at to hydrate your um, flour for the roux needs to be higher than the temperature that's needed to melt the cheese that's going in here. So, doing one scoop at a time. Like I said, this is right off the stove, so I'm not even uh, adding heat right now. If the cheese just kind of stops melting through this, I might add it back to the stove to warm it up. But look it, it's already starting to get a little bit of that thicker action. Now we did, I did put all of the, uh, that processed American cheese in there. 
so that melts super great. Once you start getting to your other aged cheddars, hard cheeses, you're going to want to add a little bit less at a time um, just because there is a chance that that gets a little gritty just because it's natural cheese. That is the debate between all natural cheese that when it melts, sometimes it looks like opaque and translucent versus what people think American pasteurized processed cheese melt looks like where it looks kind of the same. It is what it is. This is looking pretty darn good. That might be all the cheese we need to add. I am going to taste it in one second. And I'm really tasting it now because we are going to add salt and pepper. It's also to really taste the consistency too. I want to make sure that I don't taste anything gritty or anything like that. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you because I'm making a video and you're not going to eat it. So <laughs> smooth. Look at this cheese. You know what? We're going to go for it. Everything that's left in this bowl. Let's see what happens. Ah, yes. This is going to be a delightful cheese sauce. I haven't added any salt and pepper yet because if I mess this up, why would I waste the salt and pepper I'm going to add? As well as make sure you add all your cheese before you season because cheese has salt and whatnot in it. Logical. That looks pretty darn good. You can see there's a little close up of it. Oh yeah. Oh, that is super rich. Mmm. Not gritty. Definitely cheddar-y, but not over the top. Just a touch of heat. So now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to add some salt. Remember, you're going to be mixing this with a bunch of noodles that you may or may not have salted the water. So those noodles are going to dilute the flavor just a bit. I like a lot of black pepper. This is going to be spicy anyway because of them Gamer Advantage Inferno frames in honor. I wonder if they could put black pepper in the frame, like food, a food frame. Hopefully that wouldn't like hurt your eyes or something like, y'all black pepper just got in my eye. I also like adding uh, like the, the thick round or the um, restaurant style black pepper because I like seeing it. This is more of an adult mac and cheese. Let's get another spoon. Oh, yeah. And just to make it a little spicier, a little squirt of sriracha. We're going to add some on the top later. Ooh. Ooh, yes. Okay. Now we have our cheese sauce ready. Cheese sauce is still looking delightful. Nice and thick. All right. We are going to talk about some mac and cheese theory right now. For this recipe, there's thousands of ways to make mac and cheese. For this recipe and what I usually do for something like this where we're combining a sauce with cooked noodles and cooking it a little further, you are going to want to make sure that this is just about al dente. Okay? Like to the package instructions. If you were just going to take these noodles and put them in here, I would cook them one minute extra over the higher cook time on the box. And I will tell you why. Because this, going into the sauce, cooking longer, although al dente is delightful and how past most pastas are cooked before you eat them, that does not mean it is fully hydrated. If you've had leftover pasta, if you've had made yourself macaroni salad and ate it the next day and realized why is it so dry today that is because your noodle although cooked al dente to the tooth how you like it is still absorbing more water from your sauce so if you are going to make this and eat it 
tomorrow it might be good to go ahead and cook these above al dente put them in your sauce knowing that since you've cooked them more it is not going to absorb as much water from this so its consistency is going to be where you want it or if you are going to bake something for a long time in the sauce you could do it al dente or even just a little bit less than uh, al dente because you're going to cook it more all right i'm off my soapbox i'm going to add a bunch of noodles to this because I don't know if I made the appropriate amount of sauce to the amount of noodles that I have. So we're just gonna mix, hey, well, we're gonna mix and take a look. Couple other things, if you decide to rinse your pasta before you cook with it, that will not thicken your sauce up as much. So the pasta water has starch in it. So if it's really wet when you add it to this and you keep cooking, it'll thicken it up more. If you dry your pasta off a whole bunch, you know, make sure that there's no excess water, then that's something you don't have to uh, necessarily worry about. Look at that, we got, you could see how there's like pooling of extra sauce. We could totally add some more noodles. We're gonna see how close I actually got to just whipping this up to the correct proportions. This is looking pretty darn tasty. Hey, get out of there. That looks good to me. I mean, I totally could add the rest of these noodles. I'm doing it. Did I magically, and I promise you, I did not measure anything, weigh anything. Look at this. Rogue noodle. Okay. Whoa. Let's give it a taste. I'm gonna eat you guys, cause you're jerks. Oh yeah. Next thing I'm gonna do is I got this fancy cast iron little pan here. It's really shallow. So I'm gonna make this just look fancy. I've made a lot extra, so it's not gonna be bing. It's certainly not gonna fill the hole, or I'm not gonna put all the mac and cheese in there so it doesn't fill the whole thing up. Okay. That is, looks pretty good. Now, cheese sauce will kind of bubble over a little bit. Okay. Like so. Next, I got a little bowl here. I'm gonna add panko breadcrumbs. Once again, this is just what I got. So, look, I haven't even opened this thing before. My dried chives here. There we go. Add some chives. And then let me run to my fridge and get some more shredded cheese. Then I'm gonna add some cheese. My oven is warmed up. I got it at 400 degrees. Okay, and I'm just gonna give it one of these. We're gonna make a little crumby topping. Some people will mix butter in this. Some people may spray it with pan spray on the top after you mix it. The fat is gonna come out of the cheese and kind of make uh, enough bubbliness. So I don't, I'm not gonna add any butter or anything like that. Protect my cutting board because this is a fancy one. And now, sprinkle it over your mac and cheese. Oh, baby. like so i like a lot of topping that's what's also good about using more of a shallow um, pan like i'm using is that there will be more crispy crunchy topping per scoop of mac and cheese that made sense right okay this is going to go into my oven until it's goldeny brown on the top everything in there is cooked 
I added a uh, kind of room temperature-ish noodles so it's not overly hot right now. So you really only need to cook this until it's crumbly, bubbly, crunchy, brown, beautiful on the top. Beautiful. And the last thing we're gonna do, so nice and brown, I hear it bubbling. Based on how much spice level you like, you could leave it as is, but I'm gonna give it the old couple sriracha lines over the top. And I'm going to take some fancy food photos and then I'm going to eat a bunch. <laughs> and just like that, your spicy mac and cheese is done. You see steam? Awesome. Before I bite into this, thank you everybody for watching. Once again, thank you to Gamer Advantage for awesome eyewear. Again, these are the Inferno frames, which is why I needed to make something spicy. Make sure to use code Chef Mike to get a sweet discount. And if you're paying attention when this video drops, you might be able to get 20% off your entire order instead of just the normal 10. As far as mac and cheese goes, I want you to make it however you want to make it. Do you have different kinds of cheese? Do you have different kinds of noodles? Do you not want it to be spicy? Do you want to add all kinds of other weird, crazy ingredients? Do you want to bake and cook the noodles in the sauce thing? Or do you want to use your grandma's recipe? None of that is wrong. I want you to play around with it, figure it out, go in the kitchen, have some fun, make sure to tag me in all your cool food photos. And remember, to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, let everybody I know exist. No, let everybody you know that I exist, right? Brands that you think I should work with, tag them, tell them you want Chef Mike to work with them, but most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel because you are not gonna wanna miss when Chef Mike does stuff. All right, time to eat the mac and cheese. Magical. Woohoo! There's a little heat there. Woo! Gamer advantage. Use Coach Chef Mike.